Dear all, a very warm welcome to cultural heritage and cultural resilience, Nordic Baltic Conference on Civil Preparedness. We are very glad to see that so many of you are here at Vorgård in Saltfjordbaden, and you will all take, uh, uh, take part of a full program during this two-day conference. My name is Katrin melander Backman. I work at the Swedish National Heritage Board, and I will act as moderator, and I'll try to uh, guide you through the program during these two days. <clears throat> Today, we will attend a broad focus covering topics such as culture and cultural heritage in war and crisis, and how we can address and uh, disarm threats towards our countries and towards our cultural heritage. We will also learn more about strategies for preparedness for the protection of culture and cultural heritage, and how these can be developed in an international context. Tomorrow will be a half day with specialized expert discussions, including sessions on preparedness status in the Nordic and Baltic countries, followed by two parallel sessions where you can choose either a session on uh, cultural property protection in armed forces or another session which is on building civil preparedness in cultural institutions. And these two parallel sessions will then finally be uh, closed by uh, a session on first aid for cultural heritage. The theme of the conference has a strong topicality, and for that reason, we have many speakers with different angles on the issue. And therefore, we do not have the possibility to have any Q uh, and A's or any dialogue directly with the audience today. But of course, tomorrow, during those sessions, we have the possibility to have questions and dialogue. And uh, I will also remind that the conference will be filmed today and you will all be able to share this film in your respective channels later on. Before we start the day, I would like to draw your attention on some important practicalities. Uh, in the event that we have to evacuate the premises, you have an emergency exit on your right-hand side, and also follow the green signs, uh, and you come out in the foyer, and you continue to follow the, the uh, green signs. And the restrooms are located on this floor, and also you have restrooms directly close to the uh, reception. And uh, there, this will be a, a long and interesting day, but of course we will have breaks for coffee and snacks, and we will also have a longer lunch break. And uh, we will finish at 5.30 p.m. this afternoon. And immediately after we finish here, you're all very welcome to drinks and refreshments in the foyer just outside. Joining me now on stage uh, for a welcoming address is the uh, Acting Director General of the Swedish National Heritage Board, Susanne Tedén. Please give a warm welcome to Susanne. Dear Minister, esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, you have traveled here to Sweden, Stockholm, Saltsjöbaden today from both sides of the Baltic Sea and beyond in the spirit of a shared commitment. A commitment towards safeguarding our common and diverse heritage and culture. It is very fitting that last year marked the 25th anniversary of the Baltic Region Heritage Committee. Because the knowledge in exchange and collaboration within uh, uh, that committee is only one example of the many fruitful ties between us, not least through our cultural heritage. Connections that hopefully will grow in the field of culture and security issues. Safeguarding our region's cultural heritage and artistic lives is central. 
both the historic traces in our societies, as well as vibrant art artistic expressions, helps us interpret our world. It also strengthen, strengthens our sense of belonging and act as an anchor in a time marked by rapid change and conflict. And indeed, our time is marked by rapid change and conflict. For that reason, it is more important than ever to take action. For the Swedish National Heritage Board, this has meant working to support the cultural heritage sector with their efforts in civil preparedness, as well as making sure cultural heritage has a fixed seat in the table of civil preparedness planning. Our efforts, and yours, I imagine, are futile if not for collaboration between different actors and across borders. This conference, held within the framework of Sweden's chairmanship of the Nordic Council of Ministers, aims to facilitate exchange and collaboration on civil preparedness issues in the cultural sector. My hope is that this gathering marks a significant milestone in our collective journey towards preserving and enhancing the rich cultural tapestries that define our societies. Dear colleagues, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this conference with a program where researchers, experts, artists and decision makers from our respective countries and from different fields will share their in insights and expertise. Together we can, work, we can uh, work towards making sure that our living cultural heritage and our vibrant artistic sectors are safeguarded. I want to take the opportunity to thank the Nordic Council of Ministers for their generous uh, financial contribution, without which this conference uh, would not be possible. I would also like to extend a warm, a warm thank you to all partners in arranging this conference. The Directorate of the Cultural Heritage in Norway, the Finnish Heritage Agency and the Swedish Arts Council. Finally, I wish you all productive and inspiring days. Let us engage in meaningful dialogue, learn from each other and build long-lasting connections. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for these opening words. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and uh, the need for increased cooperation and regarding protection of culture and cultural heritage was, um, and also the possibility to maintain culture and cultural activities during high alert or war was a topic when the ministers for culture from the Nordic and Baltic countries gathered to adopt a joint declaration earlier in May. For Sweden, it was uh, Minister for Culture, Parisa Liljestrand, who signed the declaration. Please give a very warm welcome to Minister for Culture, Parisa Liljestrand. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to welcome you all to Stockholm and to this important conference on civil preparedness for culture and cultural heritage. The conference is held in the framework of the Swedish presidency for the 2024th of the Nordic Council of Ministers for Culture, where preparedness of the cultural sector is set as a priority theme for the presidency program. The topic has been warmly welcomed by the Nordic Council of Ministers and I'm thankful for that the Council has approved the budget to arrange this conference and I look forward to continuing the work within the framework of the Nordic Council of Ministers in these matters. I would also like to thank the Swedish National Heritage Board, the Finnish Heritage Board, the Directory of Cultural Heritage in Norway and the Swedish Arts Council for organizing this conference. Culture and cultural heritage are pillars for a vibrant, democratic and resilient society. 
societies that protect human rights, celebrate diversity, freedom of expression, and respect heritage as a foundation for the collective memory. When Russia initiated initiated its war on Ukraine in 2022, it was a devastating turning point for all of Europe, causing a serious threat to international peace and security. We have witnessed deliberate attacks against Ukrainian civilians, but also the destruction and damage of Ukrainian cultural, historical and religious sites, including museums and archives. The destruction and the eradication of places and objects of cultural and historical importance is no coincidence. It is a central part of the Russian warfare, a strategy to rewrite history. At the same time, we see courageous artists and cultural institutions giving strength to the Ukrainian people in these severe times. I have met many cultural workers and artists from Ukraine, museum staff who stayed behind, risking their own lives, physically burying objects underground to desperately protect them from the Russians. Musicians at the opera who keep performing regardless of the situation, others giving concerts in bunkers, because the show must go on. There are artists who have created astonishing pieces of art with materials from Russian tanks and airplanes, and the National Museum in Kiev chose to make an exhibition about haute couture, because in times of war, people also need things of beauty. Culture plays a crucial part in upholding a sense of normal life. It encourages resilience and it reinforces psychological defense. Ukraine was a wake-up call, but we see the same development in many other armed conflicts around the world. The alarming development has put a spotlight on the need of our own contingency planning for the cultural sector. In recent years, the Swedish awareness of the role that cultural heritage and culture play for the resilient society has risen even in other sectors. We are still in our early stages of con contingency planning, but I am proud to say that in Sweden, we now have cultural heritage on the list of vital critical functions uh, and critical infrastructure. The Swedish Defense Commission has concluded that cultural life is of essence and importance underlining the maintenance of cultural activities as long as possible in the event of armed conflict. And in March, the Swedish government decided to set up a council for the protection of cultural heritage to strengthen the preparedness in this matter. The need for preparedness in the cultural sector is, of course, not only recognized only here in Sweden, but is recognized in all the Nordic and Baltic countries. On the 3rd of May, I have held an informal meeting here in Stockholm with my Nordic and Baltic ministers for culture, my colleagues, to discuss preparedness in the cultural sector and to view possibilities for further cooperation between our countries. And as a result of that meeting, all Nordic and Baltic ministers agreed to a joint declaration where, the, where we express strengthening preparedness in our countries as a high priority and we need to protect cultural heritage and maintain cultural activities in the event of crisis, heightened state of alert or war. The declaration also emphasizes the importance of exchange of knowledge and experiences of national competence and expertise. And here we are today. I hope 
that this conference, as a follow-up of the ministerial meeting, will give new insights that can contribute to the strengthening of civil preparedness concerning culture and cultural heritage in all our attending countries. And I believe there is so much to be learned from our different perspectives, experiences, and processes. And I hope that this conference will be a valuable stepping stone for future collaborations. Thank you. Thank you, Parisa Lillestrand, for inaugurating this conference. The next speaker is the Director for Culture and Emergencies and Entity at UNESCO, Krista Pickat. Unfortunately, Krista was not able to attend in person at the conference, but she has sent us a pre-recorded video as a greeting. Please, Krista Pickat. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the government of Sweden for hosting this important event within the framework of the Swedish chairmanship of the Nordic Council of Ministers in 2024, as well as to the Swedish National Heritage Board for this kind invitation. It is an honour for me to address this crucial gathering. The protection and safeguarding of cultural heritage is at the core of UNESCO's mandate. UNESCO acknowledges the importance of culture as one of the key pillars of its action to build peace in the minds of men and women. UNESCO has developed a comprehensive set of normative instruments in the field of culture. There are six conventions to protect and safeguard culture and heritage in all its forms. In the framework of these treaties, UNESCO works to build capacity, provide technical advice, raise awareness, monitor the protection of cultural heritage and support its member states in their efforts to better protect our common heritage. As a UN specialised agency with a global mandate on culture, UNESCO advocates for culture as an enabler and driver for lasting and sustainable peace. In the declaration unanimously adopted at the UNESCO World Conference on Cultural Properties and Sustainable Development, Mondial 2022, the 150 participating countries affirmed for the first time that culture is a global public good. Consequently, states call for culture to be included as a specific objective in its own right, also among the next United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Your meeting today is also a reminder that the protection of cultural heritage is intrinsically a protection of the richness of our diversity, which complements the principles of international humanitarian law. This is particularly important in times of crisis, when culture and cultural heritage provide a sense of hope, identity and dignity, and serve also as a source of resilience and reconciliation. The Mondekul Declaration recognised the impact of multidimensional crisis to humankind, armed conflicts, effects of climate change, but it also highlighted the power of culture for sustainable development, peace and stability, and the irrefutable influence to foster international cooperation and dialogue. Above all, the Declaration renewed the global commitment necessary to safeguard our common heritage and, and ensure its transmission to future generations. Seventy years ago, the devastating destruction of cultural property witnessed during the Second World War resulted in the adoption, in 1954, of the Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict, the first convention in the field of culture under the auspices of the United Nations. Targeted for its symbolic power, heritage is still at the heart of conflicts today. Not only does this affect the peoples and weaken their identity, but it can also make it harder for communities to recover from a crisis and rebuild their lives without the continuity provided by their cultural heritage. Against this backdrop, the 70th anniversary of the Hague Convention this year 
represents an opportunity to reaffirm the relevance and necessity of preparedness from peacetime onwards for the protection of our culture and cultural heritage. This was also at the heart of the discussions at the recent conference held in The Hague entitled Cultural Heritage and Peace, building on 70 years of the Hague Convention for the protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict. What we also need to remember from this conference is the need for all those involved in heritage protection to work together, starting during peacetime to ensure a coordinated response in the event of crisis. This collaboration is a cornerstone of our preparedness, ensuring that our heritage is passed on to future generations. A collective and coordinated response must be prepared, involving all civil, and military stakeholders managing, protecting, safeguarding cultural property. With this in mind, UNESCO has been promoting international collaboration to establish a strong network between states to encourage knowledge exchange on practices, ensuring communities can be better supported in the advent of emergencies. Today's complex global landscape poses significant challenges to the protection of cultural sites. The Hague Convention, along with its protocol, underscores the critical need for cooperation among countries, international organizations and NGOs. This collective effort is essential to safeguard heritage that is increasingly threatened by conflicts, climate change and inequalities. It is imperative to continuously build capacity and foster shared exp expertise across all stakeholders involved in heritage protection. This collaborative spirit not only prepares us for emergencies, but also strengthens our peacetime efforts towards cultural preservation. Three major recommendations emerged from the conference to strengthen collaboration. Firstly, increased use of digital tools to support international partnerships, ensuring efficient communication, data sharing, and resource allocation for cultural heritage protection during crisis. Second, the establishment of partners group for preparedness and emergency situations to develop unified methodologies and training tools, improving coordinated and response effectiveness. The Baltic stakes could be part of this group and ensure united methodology and preparedness in the region among heritage professionals. And the final recommendation is encouragement to increase in inter-organizational projects to foster collaboration and global capacity to protect and preserve cultural heritage. Some Baltic countries have already established an effective collaboration between national museal institutions or national universities with the security forces or between the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Defense. As much as it is essential to train armed forces in the respect and safeguarding of cultural property, it is equally important that cultural professionals be trained on how to react to protect cultural property in hostile, wartime or emergency situations. As an example of good practice, UNESCO supported the training of military and cultural personnel from the Baltic region in cultural property protection during a recent workshop that was organized in January in Estonia. The three-day training was held in partnership with the Ministry of Defence, the Defence Forces and the Ministry of Culture of Estonia, as well as the Estonian National Heritage Board and the Estonian National Commission for UNESCO. Aimed at military personnel, some heritage professionals uh, from the Ministry of Culture also participated in the training, highlighting the need for collaboration between civilians and military personnel to ensure a coordinated response in the event of a major crisis and the importance of establishing a dialogue. This training was followed up with a series of initiatives at the national level. Such kind of trainings and uh, exercises could further be developed in the Nordic Baltic states with UNESCO support as a key to coordinated and effective preparedness in the region. As Sweden and the Nordic Baltic states are demonstrating their commitment to heritage protection through the organization of this event, we assure you of UNESCO support in this endeavor. 
Thank you, and I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you, Krista, and thank you, Inesco, for these greetings.